Is it true that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't have a shadow? That the reflection of light they didn't cast a, a shadow. This is what they, they've said. The Prophet ﷺ, the light was luminous and would, would go through Prophet ﷺ. And that he was the reflection of an immense light at night and that glowed like the shining full moon. The luminous reality of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ is immense. There are in Tazkiyat and Awliya and these were times before that these are not times that are now because of the, the Dajjal and the, the deception of all the magic and, and all of these things that will be happening on earth. But there are many stories of Tazkiyat and Awliya that they were very luminous and their physicality would vanish and you would see from them a hologram. Hologram, hologram, the Prophet was a hologram. What a Prophet, the light would go through him, he was a jellyfish. If you put him in a dish, you can see him but you wish, for he was a hologram. Prophet Muhammad you can see through, for he was so handsome, not like you. What? No. That the reflection of light didn't have a shadow? That the reflection of light they didn't cast a, a shadow? This is what they, they've said. The Prophet ﷺ, the light was luminous and would, would go through Prophet ﷺ. And then I don't know a piece of a Christ to all of you first, but let us analyze this. I mean, the guy he illuminate, okay, I mean. That remind me of a story, but it's dirty, I'm not going to mention it. Uh, but someone he eliminate, but light go through him, and he have no shadow. If light go through him, that means we can see nothing. Dool, we look from the glass, from the window, we see whatever behind, why? We have a glass, it's a glass, uh, simply there is an object, but we don't see the glass. Why? Because the glass is see-through. So are you saying that your Prophet was see-through? If he has no shadow, that means the light going through him. Which means he is not, must be invisible. So Aisha, she was having sex with the invisible man. So all the hadith saying they saw the Prophet, they saw the Prophet describe him, he was a big butt, he have a big ass, he have a big belly, he have a whatever, he is fat, but it turned to be false. Because if he is see-through, we should not have those description. We should not even know which one his face, which one is his ass. He's see-through. Tell us about the hologram, please. That Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu didn't have a shadow? That the reflection of light, they didn't cast a, a shadow? This is what they, they've said. The Prophet Sallallahu the light was luminous and would, would go through Prophet Sallallahu And that he was the reflection of an immense light at night and that glowed like the shine. So why Aisha, she used to light candles so she can see if the guy he illuminate at night. Listen carefully, Abdul, I'm going with you. If we have a person who illuminate at night, why in the world this person he need to light light so he can see? Hmm? Was your Prophet using candles or any source of light at night? <laughs> if he illuminated. <laughs> you know, uh, Muhammadan. You claim that you Muslims don't worship Muhammad. 
Suddenly now Muhammad is light and he illuminate. Okay, and the, the illuminated Muhammad, what he do is, what else? Shining full moon. The luminous reality of Sayyidina Muhammad is immense. There are in Tazkiyat and Awliya and these were times before that these are not times that are now because of the, the Dajjal and the, the deception of all the magic and, and all of these things that will be happening on earth. But there are many stories of Tazkiyat and Awliya that they were very luminous and their physicality would vanish and you would see from them a hologram. Mm -hmm. I think there was one shaykh that when he would talk, he said that when I go after Juma and talk, take this sword and move it through me. And as he's sitting and giving the, the talk, they moved the sword and the sword went right through him as if his light being was the only thing casting out to the audience. And that what we know now is a hologram, that his, his luminous reality was manifesting to the audience, but his physicality was hidden somewhere else. So then these are… His physicality was hidden somewhere else. Uh, Abdul, this is this is ultimate fault he is posting that he made a video and he spanked me. Did he made a video saying that his mother she have to be effed in four different time to prove that she is a fornicator so she will have to marry a fornicator? Good for him, good for him. <laughs> no Christian Prince, no. This is about the women have to be proven she, if she fornicate four time, then she have to marry a fornicator. So like we have your mother, she have to F and fornicate four time, so she can be labeled as fornicator. Abdul, this is the spanking. We laugh at you, we laugh. Listen, listen, focus with me, ultimate fault, with the illuminate your prophet. Listen, his body was not there. He's not there. Did you hear what the guy said? His body is not there. Physical body is not, is not. He, wh where is the physical body of the Prophet? In casting out to the audience and that what we know now is a hologram. That his, his luminous reality was manifesting to the audience, but his physicality was hidden somewhere else. So then these are many different realities of light and the reflection. So Prophet is the master of these realities. Uh -huh. If he wanted at that time to bring his luminous reality and hide the physical, then definitely there would be no shadow because light passing through light casts no shadow. It only casts a shadow on that which is solid. See? I mean this is proven to be true. Hold on, who is this? What it's mean to be a woman, Dr. Hanifa, what the heck is that? I mean, I don't know first of all if you are a woman or not. Let us go back to the guy. Where is the guy? Is it true that Prophet Muhammad... Stop touching your nose. Let us go to the second guy. Hey, tell us about Prophet Muhammad. Qatada rahimahullah says, ma ba'ath Allahu nabiyyan illa hasan al-wajh hasan al-sawt. What? Allah has never sent a prophet except that that prophet had a beautiful face and a beautiful voice. That's it. Now I know who is the prophet. All those singers, we hear them, those are prophets. They are. Allah never sent anyone, any prophet, unless he have a good, he's a very good looking and he have a nice voice. Is that include the guy he go in YouTube and he sing all the time one song the only song he knew which is oh mommy oh mommy mommy blue oh mommy blue this is the only song you know so it, this is the requirement to be a prophet to have a nice face and a nice voice and what is the proof that Muhammad have a nice voice okay hold on hold on, hold on. Muhammad is the most good looking person in the world Hmm. If so, why you Muslims are talking about it? Why you are talking about how white he is? Why it's so important for Muhammadan to describe how sexy Muhammad is if he was? 
You know, I believe all the garbage they say is a garbage. All those is written hundreds of years after Muhammad. In the same time, how come the Christians who they worship Jesus, they worship him literally, they believe he's God, but never spoke about how Jesus looked like, not a single one. Do you know why? Because you Muslims are racist, bragging about how white Muhammad is. If you watch all this video, you will see he is talking about how white he is. If you watch the other video, you will see he is so hot, sexy. Don't play this video in front any of a homosexual. He will be sadly masturbating. The dark was immensely dark. The white was excessively white. وَفِي أَشْفَارِهِ And his eyelashes were long. The pretty Prophet Muhammad. He's so pretty. His nipples were pimples and the purples. His eyelashes is so long. His cheek, brother, his cheek, his cheek. I mean, I cannot tell you even how his cheek tell us. Oh, his voice, even his voice. And in his voice was a natural echo. Christian Prince, 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 listen to me, to me, to me. Now I'm going to teach you how to behave, behave, behave. Because I'm a prophet of Allah, Allah. And because I'm a prophet, I have an echo, echo, echo. Now we understand why Muslims, when you used to call me in pal talk, pal talk, pal talk, they used to have echo, echo, echo when they speak to me, me, me. They always activate a software, it's called the echo software, software, software. Because that will make your words holy and you will make your profit, profit, profit. You do not need to do that, just go to the bathroom, 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 and you will hear yourself 20 times, time, time. So now to be a prophet, 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 you have to have an echo, echo, echo. Is that an echo? Why is eyes or eyes? He Muslim is Muslim is Muslim. When Allah, Allah, Allah spoke to Moses, Moses, Moses. Do we have an echo? Echo, echo. So when Moses he spoke, he spoke, spoke, spoke. He have an echo, echo, echo too. Does that mean the Torah was repeated many time, time, time because of the echo, echo, echo? When he speak, 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 he have an echo, echo, echo. What the heck is that, 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 man, 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 man? Continue. And his neck was elegantly... Don't go down. The guy start from the face and now he's going down. Now we are in the neck. What, we, what he have in his neck? Long. His neck is long. Even the beard. Well, your beard is even better than his beard. Prove it. His beard was full and... Oh, not like Zach and... Uh, ah. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> his beard was full and that make him... Uh, like a qualified person to be the man of God. Really? Let me focus in Zakarnaik beer. Look at this beer. The guy, he put all kind of fertilizers in the world. And the beard is not growing. So sorry, Zakarnaik. I mean, your beard is really hilarious. You are not a qualified. Obviously, you see, when God, he made your beard Thick, that means you are a man of God. What if the guy is, I mean, most of people in Asia, they don't even have hair in their face. Oh, you cannot be a man of God then. You cannot, you cannot. You have to have a beard. beard, beard. If you don't have a beard, 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 so you are not a man of God, God, God. What if the beard is growing downstairs, downstairs, downstairs? That will work, 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 work. <laughs> I don't know how I can make an echo of my of my my love. <laughs> Continue. Thick as a run, his eyebrows were arced. Oh but the boy, eyebrows! I mean, hey, listen, if you are a gay or homosexual, don't do stuff here. 
Don't start touching yourself. Disclaimer. Don't do this at home. Eyebrows. I mean, well, you Muslims are really sick. Eyebrows. So all of this handsome man, he was going after a child. She is six years old girl. And his eyebrows is like this. Is that will justify why he is uh, uh, going after children? He's a bit of fire. His eyebrows. What is left to you, Muslim? You don't describe. Let's continue. They were not joined. It was separated. Separated. What? What the problem if they are joined? What will happen? In summit, فعليه الوقار. When he was silent. Let's, uh, hold on, hold on. I want to go to the place where he speak about at night. Look here, here. Because this one make me feel like I want to cry. A guy, he was walking at night, at night, and he saw the prophet. prophet. And what happened? What happened? Just listen. Yeah, almost commanding and overtaking. Ajmal and Nas. وَأَبْهَاهُمْ مِنْ بَعِيدٍ From afar, the most striking and outstanding in appearance. وَأَحْسَنُهُمْ وَأَجْمَلُهُمْ مِنْ قَرِيبٍ And when he came near, the best of them and the most handsome of them in closeness. حُلْوُ الْمَنْطِقِ Listen, do you hear the music behind? This is the Muslim music. Like, uh, this will make it. In every Muslim video, you will hear this. Uh, like what the heck is that? Allah knows best. Okay. So he is, uh, he he speaks so good. Is that when he said, "Go and buy the penis of your father"? Is that included? Huh? He's so he speaks so good, man. He speaks so good. Go to trust more. Or maybe when he said that the the hell is made from women. Or maybe he was speaking so good when he said, "Your mother, huh, Mr. Sheikh." Your mother, she come in the image of the devil and she live in the image of the devil. After he saw a woman walking by and he got horny and he went to his wife to F her. And now he is blaming the woman that every woman is a devil. Do you print that hadith to your mother in the top of her bed or her grave? That woman, she come in the image of the devil and she live in the image of the devil? Aren't you proud of the good speech of the Prophet Muhammad? So such an exalted and sweet level of logic, like when exactly. Let me show you the logic. You know, when the prophets speak logic, like we mentioned to you now, actually, uh, Muhammad claiming that every woman is a devil. I, I'm just going with the logic, you know, the logic of Prophet Muhammad. So every woman in this earth is the devil, according to Muhammad. But then the logic of Muhammad that when you go to heaven, if you pray to Allah and you cut your penis and you kill some Christians and Jews and you beat your wife and you have sex with the children and you bend over and you fart at the one behind you, Allah will give you a lot of those devils in heaven. Unlimited devils. The lowest reward is 72 devil. This is the logic of your prophet. Women is the devil. And then I promise you, if you pray to me, I will give you a lot of them in heaven. Hmm? Let us talk about other logic. The Prophet, he ordered the Muslim to drink camel urine. Okay. And he forbid the Muslims from drinking, you know, uh, wine. All right. So now the logic of the Muslim that their, their wine is urine, and their urine is wine. Hold on. They drink the camel urine. Mm. But isn't it the logic if your prophet, according to his science, that camels are made from the devil? Which means you Muslims are drinking the devil urine? I'm going with you. This is the science of your prophet. The prophet, when he speak logic, he speak logic. Muhammad, he said to them, perform a prayer in the sheep 
resting place and do not perform prayer in the camel resting place for they were created from the devils so you muslims you milk the devil you drink the penis water the urine hot fresh and he is a create or it is a created from the devil Is that a logic? The when the prophet he speak, he speak logic. Additional logic. If a man he found his wife being in the top of a man naked, he cannot even claim that she was for nukitim. Because he have to provide for witnesses and the four they have to see the penis of the man going in and out. A man he came to Muhammad and he said to him, Are you saying to me? I have to ask the guy to continue and wait for me until I find four witnesses? The Prophet, he said, yes. Now, logically, that is a good news for Andrew Tits. Especially what we heard, that a person or a woman, she been raped, she have to bring four witnesses. Because now, we cannot prove rape unless we have four witnesses. To prove it so the woman she is being raped and witnessed by three men it's not enough and by the way if you have a thousand witness they are women those are not even accepted so the logic of a prophet Muhammad is a logic of an idiot and not to forget to mention what he said in the Quran that if a woman her husband divorce her three time she have to if a new husband, not to marry a new husband, he's, she's married, but she have to if him, tankah. She have to if a new husband in order to be able to go to the previous husband. You ask the Muslim, what the heck is that? What for? They say to you, this is the punishment for the husband who divorced her. But Abdul, she is the one being if, not him. <laughs> What about you go and if the man who did that, if this is his punish, if this is a punishment for him, so you punish the man by forcing a Muslim woman to open her legs for a, for a man he she don't want, as we have in the story about a woman she was beaten by her husband. She didn't want to sleep with him because simply she married him, uh, hoping that he will not sleep with her. Uh, she refused. And he will, you know, he will give up and he will divorce her. He get upset, he divorced her. But the guy did not do that. He started beating the hell of her. She went to Muhammad. And Aisha told her, told, told Muhammad, look. A believing woman is the most suffering woman. Look at her skin. Is it greener than her clothes? And Muhammad told them, told the women, well, if this is your intention, you married this man, so you can go back to your previous husband, you better know that you cannot come back to her, your previous husband unless you taste his orgasm. This is the logic of a prophet of God. The woman, she is a victim by an idiot because Muhammad, he made this man have a power over divorce. One word, he divorced her. You made it so easy. And now you are punishing the women. She can't get back to her husband unless you, a new man, he boom, boom her. Very decent, conservative religion. We go back to the video. Tell us more about the description of Prophet Muhammad. How white he is. All of the description is about how white Muhammad is. He's white. What you can do about it? There's no way a, a prophet of Allah will be black. They have to be white. Have to be good looking white man have to have a nice voice what else let us see when he used to speak it was so coherently logical it was smooth and easy to understand uh, brother so why we have to open the uh, tafsir ibn kathir and then ibn kathir he say allah knows best what the prophet he meant as long it's so easy to understand can you name for me one thing you Muslims, Muhammad, he said, you agree upon? Like the sun set, brother, uh, the Prophet Muhammad was riding his donkey. 
He said to Abu Dhar, Do you know where this said? Abu Dhar, he know Muhammad, he loved, you know, he loved to be worshipped. He loved to be praised, you know. So he gave him, you know, the echo, like the Prophet Muhammad, 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 you and Allah and Prophet Muhammad, Muhammad, knows best, best, best of Muhammad. He's like, yes, thank you, yeah, you're right, you're right. I'm, they are mushrikeen, they are kuffar, they associate the name of a man and the knowledge of a man with the knowledge of their God. And yet they claim to be monotheist. But the fact Muhammad is their God, the devil Muhammad. Look what happened. It's easy to understand what Muhammad is saying. And I did understand. But you Muslim don't. If we show him this hadith, find me one Muslim, he say, I understand. They don't. Suddenly they don't understand. Actually, they didn't see it. The Prophet says, do you know where the sun goes? To the Abdul behind him. The Abdul behind him, as usual, he says, Allah and his messenger knows best because Muhammad is God. Muhammad now, which is very easy to understand what he's saying, it's obvious. He says, well, it goes and sleep and go down and take a shower and sit in a spring of boiling hot water, not warm. But if you ask any Muslim, what do you think about this? Or if we go to the Quran where it says that Zul Qurnayn he found the sun set in a murky water, which confirmed the hadith. The Muslim they say, no, no, doesn't say that, CP. What it's meant, he it appeared to him, appear, appear. Abdul, where is the appear? Okay. Abdul. If the word appear there, okay, no problem. It's appear. Then we say it's appear. And buddy, by, by the way, it would be funny that Allah is talking. And then he says, it appeared to him. So why you are talking to this? What is this, you know? Isn't it the same verse says that Allah gave him all the knowledge he needs? So how Allah gave him the knowledge? And then it appeared. So is, was, he, was he a fool? He thought the sun set in murky water? Or Allah gave him the knowledge? Isn't it the Quran says Allah, he gave him from everything? Everything, including knowledge. Read carefully. We established him on earth and we gave him from every kind of means. Which means knowledge. Included. And then suddenly, until he reached the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting in a murky, boiling water. Where does the word appear? Do Allah speak with our, do Muhammad, did Muhammad, he drop the word? Maybe Muhammad, he drop it because he is so handsome. This is what happened to you when you are so handsome, you know? When you are handsome, you drop not only a word, you drop the whole book. So he is extremely, you can understand anything the Prophet said. Like as an example, when he said that you can eat in your mother house. Or your father's house. Very easy. I mean, if you think about it, I mean, this is astonishing. I was all my life wondering if I can eat in my father's house. And then, you know, I said to myself, now I am like 18 years old. So, maybe I commit a crime when I was one day old eating in my dad's house. Mm. But if not the prophet of Allah, Deliver for us Al-Qur'an. How in the world we will know that if you are blind, you can eat in your home. And if you are unable to walk, you can, or, or sick, you can eat in your home. Or if you none of those, which, which then you ask yourself, so what the heck is mentioning the blind and the one who cannot walk? If everybody anyway can eat in his home, How many hours it took Allah to make this chapter in the Quran? There's no blame on the blind, nor any blame on the lame, nor any blame in the sick, nor on yourself if you eat at your own takbir, or your father houses, 
or your mother homes, or your brother homes, oh. This is wisdom, that is the most dumb ever. And they say to you, can you make Quran like this? Imagine now in your TV station, I don't know where you live. Let us say you live in Pakistan. Huh? And then they have a breaking news. And a very handsome, you know, TV uh, host, he appeared in the screen. Handsome. And he said to you, Brother Sitar, today we're at even you from the president. He is saying it's not a problem if you eat in the president's house. What the heck? And if you eat in your mother's house? No, no way. Are you serious? And if you eat in your sister house? Are you kidding me? And if you eat in your cousin house? What the heck? And your empty out? And your man out? And your and your son and out? And your daughter out? And in the honey house? I don't give up the kid. What the heck? So the guy who is so handsome, he come with such a handsome verse. Like beside where he found the sunset and the flying carpet and Gog and Magog. This is the handsome guy, huh? It sounds like the more, if, he, if it's true, he's handsome. Look like the more handsome you are, the more donkey you are. Unbelievable. Okay, tell us more about Prophet Muhammad. I cannot wait. And I'm so glad I can eat. Look, look, look. I mean, how name he counted. Look, your internal paternal aunt and the home of your internal uncle and the home of the maternal aunt and those who have the keys of what the heck don't never never hire a muslim as a real estate agent they give him the key he eat the food in your fridge look at it it says there any house you have the key for it what the heck is that i mean at that time people where they eat the mcdonald they eat in their houses anyway where people eat at that time this is a small tiny village they don't have McDonald's and Burger King. People eat in their home. And the guy, especially the guy who is blind, and where he go? Usually, usually, Muhammadan. A blind man, where he go to eat? Hmm. Let me think. Let me think. Haram. He cannot eat in his, before Islam, he cannot eat in his house. No, he haram. Before Islam, but Allah, the mercy of Allah, he allowed the blind man to eat at the home. Hmm. He who sleep in his home before Islam? No, he sleep in the home of a neighbor. Haram. Let us continue. Tell us more about the Prophet who is... And, he, and then if you search on the internet, by the way, you will find the Muslims, they have a collection of the descendant of Prophet Muhammad. Let me give you an example. What the heck is that? You have to be very wide. You have to be very, very white. I mean, it, by the way, even they found that the Queen of England who passed away, according to Muslims, she is descended from Prophet Muhammad. <laughs> Al Qazafi is descended from Prophet Muhammad, Saddam Hussein. Not only that, even the guy from Brunei, every scum back in the world, just to control his people, he claimed that he is descended from, and who, and who dare to say he is not? Look. Even this guy, he is descended. Everybody descended from Prophet Muhammad. I mean, the Prophet Muhammad was even everybody. But the guy cannot have kids. Even the Quran says so. You are descended from who? And the grandsons of Muhammad, they killed them. Who is the son of who? One in the Brunei, one in Jordan, one in Morocco, one in a Holonulu. I mean, look, actually, yeah, Al Qazafi, he looked like me when I am relaxed. Even this guy, he claimed that he looked like Muhammad, and he is. <laughs> he is descended from Prophet And then the Muslim, they start drawing, but the drawing is haram, brother. This is Muhammad according to their imagination. Who is this guy? This is the Prophet Muhammad? Well, I mean, if this is him, there's a lot of people, they are way, way, way more better. You must be kidding me. 
Are you sure? And the funny is, they describe how handsome Muhammad is, right? How good looking he is. Then we have his uncle. His uncle, which he refused to accept Islam. And they describe him and they draw pictures of him in a very ugly way. But what I find astonishing, <laughs> that the uncle of Muhammad is very ugly. How Muhammad is good looking? Any Muhammadan can solve the problem? This is how your prophet looked like, uh, sorry, uh, the uncle of your prophet looked like. This is your drawing, Muslim, not my drawing. This is how you Muslims draw the uncle of Muhammad. Have you ever heard of somebody he don't take the look of his uh, family? So how Muhammad looks so good and his uncle looks so bad? Is that possible? The only solution I can I can help you that Muhammad father no way is the brother of this guy. No way. Let me remind you, your prophet was born four years after his father's death. Four years. Hmm? So your uncle looked like this and you look like that? Obviously you are not from the family. You cannot be from the same family. I mean, look, if the uncle is not like, you know, I mean, a eh, little different, but look at, look at this. this. This is how the Muslim, they draw him. I mean, Muslims, don't tell me that there is nothing to, they share between them. Like, Muhammad, he have to take some, he took the eyes maybe? Let me zoom in the eyes, hold on. Forgive me, guys. I'm going to uh, zoom on the eyes. Okay, Prophet Muhammad, maybe his eyes. Remember in the in the video, he said that his uh, eyebrows are uh, separated. Well, this guy, his eyebrows are separated. Actually, I don't see eyebrows. What happened to them? Okay. What about the color of his eyes? And look. He said in the video that his beard is so thick, this guy, his beard is so thick. So now we have, huh? we are getting closer. We are getting Muhammad together. Hmm? His beard is very, very, very thick. I hate my beard. I shave it in the morning. By three hours after, if you touch my face, I have a beard again. So I'm, I'm, I'm qualified to be a prophet, by the way. Listen to my voice. Hello, it's me you're looking for, just wait, what the heck is that? If you have a nice voice, and you have a thick beard, and you have a good looking face, you are a prophet, and this is the uncle. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Now we know. Okay, tell us more about Prophet Muhammad who, do, who looked like his uncle. <laughs> you know what? If I am Muhammad, the first thing I should say, how in the world I don't look like this family? I mean, if he is the son of this family, and this is the uncle, all of them, they are, you know, and especially those people, they marry their cousins. Continue, continue. He was to the point, not excessive, not too short. Exactly. Like, are you kidding me? He is always to the point. He is always to the point. Not long, not short. 
Okay, okay. He is to the point. Uh-huh. Hmm. Not, not short. Which story I should show you to how he is so straight to the point? Yeah, Juju wa Ma'juj. Which is driving the Muslims not until now? Or at just Sarsa? He is so straight to the point, the Prophet. Tell us about Al Jassasa. An interview with Al Jassasa. To the point. And the Antichrist, he was in an island which is Cyprus. Brother. Are you sure? We will not show you the hadith which is weak. No, we will show you something very fat and not skinny. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet is a straight to the point. Chapter Al Jassas. What the heck is that? The name is suspicious. It's weird. A group of Muslims. They arrive to an island in the middle of nowhere. In case you do not know the address, for sure it is not Travarka Square. When they arrive there, after they lost their way for a month in the sea, they were hungry looking for bread. And there's no Starbucks, as you see. So they walk into the island. And they saw something unbelievable. What they saw. Read with me. Straight to the point, as the Prophet Muhammad he does. Prophet Muhammad he came out after he heard a nice story from a guy who supposed he was a Christian became a Muslim. He told me something which agrees with what I was telling you about the Dajjal. The guy told him something agree in what Muhammad used to tell them. He narrated to me that he had sailed a ship along the, with 30, 30 men of Bani Lakum and Bani Jadam and had been toasted by the waves in the ocean for a month. For a month. Only the waves taking them left and right for a month. And where is, which sea is that? For a month? I mean, do you know how big the Mediterranean? We are not talking about the, this is an island supposedly in the Mediterranean. But anyway, then these waves took them near the land which their ocean. What? Within the ocean? It says ocean in the Arabic or it says sea? Make it ocean so it can be more acceptable. Took them near the land which the ocean, these waves took them near. Mm. And the time of the sunset, everything happened is time in the time of the sunset. They sit in a small side, side boat and enter the island. There was a beast with long thick hair. They would not distinguish its face from its back. Hmm. That's my cousin when he go in the swimming pool. They said, We to you. Who can you be? Thereupon, I said, It said, I'm a Jassasa. Would the voice have to match with the beast? That's not a voice of a beast. That's a voice of Ali Dawa. Come on. Al-Jassasa. They said, what is Al-Jassasa? 
look, this is a beast that speak Arabic. And these bees don't eat them. They are discussing like normally, hey, hello, how are you doing? Where are you? Who are you? I'm the Sasa. What do you do for a living? I do the Sasa scene. <laughs> Where you are you coming from? From the land of the Sasa. Ooh. And why you have a lot of hair on you? Because I'm just Sasa. Oh, what, what does that mean? Uh, Allah knows best. <laughs> How can you speak Arabic yet you are a beast? Uh, that's a question I cannot answer you because I speak only Hebrew. But you are speaking to us uh, Arabic now. Ah, oh, okay, you know. Uh, uh, now, but after you leave, I speak only Hebrew. Ah, oh, okay. So, and it says, O oh, people, go to this person in the monastery as a very much eager to know about you i mean the ghosts are they just came how the guy there he knew about them he the narrator said when it named the person for us we were afraid of it thus it should be a devil then we riddle when tell came to the monastery and found a well-built man there with his hands tied to his neck what a sad having iron shackles between his two legs what a disgusting situation and up to his uncle uncles and we said, we be upon you, who are you? And he said, you would soon come to know about me. But tell me, tell me, who are you? We said, <laughs> we are people from Arabia, can't you tell? Don't you see us dressing like Arab, potato? And then he said to them, after they told him the story and our boat embarked, etc. After a month journey, we get into the side of the boat and enter the island. And they told him the whole story. They're repeating the story now. They see a Jassasa. A Jassasa told her, come to meet you, okay? A Jassasa. Okay. So now the guy he knew. But you remember, a Jassasa said that this person is eager to meet you. If you go back in the story, what she said at Jassasa, that this person in the, in the monastery is eager to meet you. It turned to be that the person, he never saw them, he never heard of them, he did not know who they are. He was surprised of their coming. And then, we said, she said, I am a Jassasa. We said, what is a Jassasa? They are telling the old story again from the beginning. Do you see how straight to the point? It's a straight to the point. He's repeating the whole story now. And then, just to make it short, so we came to you in a hot haste fearing that might be a devil. He, the chained person, said, Tell me about the date palm tree of Bishan. He said, About what aspect of theirs? Do you seek information? He said, I asked you whether there is a tree bear fruit or not. Mm -hmm. In there, there's only one tree bear fruit? Okay. We said, yes, yes, thereupon, he said, hmm, I think those would not bear fruit. He said, inform me about the lake of Tabaraya. Hmm? Tabaraya, we are Tabaraya, now we are in Israel? Yes, brother, we are in Israel. We said, which aspect do you want to know? He said, there is water in it. He said, there is abundance of water in it. Whereupon he said, hmm, I think it would soon become dry. He again said, inform me about Zokor. They said, what uh, aspect of Zakar you want to know? He, the chained person, said, Is there water and it does it irrigate the land? We said, yeah, yes, yes. 
there's a bondage of water there, okay? And, uh, you know, the inhabitants of people of Medina, they are great from it. Hmm. Then he say, look, he's getting close to Muhammad now. See the story, how it's working? From Tabaraya to, you know, to the palm tree, and now to Medina and the water of Medina, and now we are getting closer. Hmm. True story, direct to the topic, direct to the topic. And then he said to them, hmm, inform me about the illiterate prophet. Oh boy. Now he got the job. Inform me about the illiterate prophet. How in the world he knew about Muhammad? So this guy, he came to Muhammad. He fabricated a story and Muhammad, he loved it. He asked you about me, really? And Muhammad, he knew this guy is a scumbag lying, you know? And now Muhammad told him, see, did you hear what he said? Let me tell you what he told me. He asked about me, about me, me, personally. Personally, illiterate prophet. If there's anyone illiterate prophet in the world, I mean, look, I'm good looking. I have a nice voice, but I cannot read. In the book of a Christian prince, that is a donkey. <laughs> a handsome donkey who cannot read. Okay, that is the qualification to be a prophet. And then he said, what has he done? What do you mean? Are you talking about, how you know that the prophet Muhammad, when he received the chapter of the Quran, the first one, he was doing poo-poo? No way, you know that? We said has come out of Medina, Mecca and has settled in Yathrib, which later Muhammad, he killed the Jews and he changed the name. He said, do the Arab fight against him? We said, yes, yes, yes. He did deal with them. Did he deal with them? We informed that he overcome those. This is why this guy, by the way, he stopped praising Muhammad now, this fabricator, because Muhammad now he overcome and he became victorious. So he came to Muhammad telling him a story, fabrication, so he can get a credit from Muhammad. Uh, to make it uh, the story uh, uh, short, is a Christian prince the owner of this uh, channel? No, no, this is YouTube. Trust me, I own nothing. You know? <laughs> YouTube can kick me anytime, you know. Like last time I made a video, YouTube sent me, uh, say, you know, saying to me, we can sh send you free shipping and handling to Allah. I told him that is exactly what I'm looking for. I go there, I get, the, I, I, I will cut him pieces and I will convince him that I'm Zakar Naik. For sure, this is a Christian prince channel. What the hell is wrong with you? Anyway, so here it says, to make the story short, you see, the Muhammad, you go straight to the point. I mean, the story is so long. If I want to read it for you, it has to spend like two weeks. So it turned to be that this is the Antichrist who will come at the end of the time and now he is in Cyprus. We Muslims, where we can find the guy now? He's still in the chain? Is he still in the chain? That he's, what, he's still locked up? I mean, as long as just Sasa is there, the guy is there, somebody can call Google Earth. How come Google Earth could not find a just, is that the Bigfoot? Bigfoot, Bigfoot, where you wanna go? Where you wanna go when I come for you, Bigfoot, Bigfoot? What? Nobody can find those ones. I mean, this is the Dajjal, this is the Antichrist himself. The same again, a stupid story like Gog and Mago. So all those are supposedly proving to us that Muhammad, he goes straight to the point. Look at the light in the second he mentioned the name of Muhammad. Do you see how the screen become uh, uh, yellow? Like the Shia, they say, if you wear a yellow shoes, your penis will be so strong. If you wear a black shoes, uh, you know, sorry, your penis will not function. And you know, for me, I don't want to have yellow shoes where my thing will be like all the time, like the la 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 la. I don't want to wear a black shoes, which my you know, <laughs> like what the heck? So I say to myself, I'm going to buy a shoes which have a black and yellow. <laughs> To banners, to banners. كأن منطقه خرزات نظم يتحدرن. خرزات.
his utterances, his words. Kharazat. <laughs> Khara in Arabic means shit, excuse me. Kharazat, especially the way he said it. Now listen, I want to show you where the guy, he come at night. Here you see the emotion. I want you to get your tissues ready. Please, sit down. Disclaimer. You cry. You feel sad. You feel so excited. You have heart attack. Disclaimer. It's your problem. What you would hear right now is beyond your imagination. Look at the guy face. So touching. And you know those sheikh, the more they show emotion, the more the Muslims like they trust them. Like you see, look how he look how he is so emotion. And the guy later is like almost crying. Medium and height. Your eyes didn't have not tall. He is medium and height. Shame on you. He is medium in height. And Adam was 60, um, uh, you know, cupid tall. What the Muslim did you, can you believe it? The guy is medium in height. What do you mean medium? I don't, who would like medium? Do you like medium? What do you mean medium? Like what, 150 uh, centimeter? Shame on you. Couldn't you make him tall? I'm really upset. Is that why he used to wear high she high heels shoes? Like Ahmed Najad? The strain to look up at him, nor was it tedious to look down at him. He was a comfortable sight to look at. Very comfortable, very comfortable. He had friends. The people he have friends. I don't have any. You know. Where is the story about the moon? Hold on, where is the moon? This is, will take forever. I want to see the moon story. Here we go, the moon here. Uh, oh boy, we are going to cry soon. This is Muhammad Rasulullah. Really? Anas ibn Malik says. That's it, Anas he said. Anas he said, that means true. Says, I came out one night. Uh, I came out one night, it was the full moon night. Oh, uh, oh! What are you? Don't don't have orgasm life on it. What are you doing? Say it again. And what are you point? And look at the background behind them. They have the moon ready. I mean, they brought the moon. I mean, actually, the moon could not even resist not to be there just to show them that why you don't bring Muhammad too. Malik says. I came out one night. Uh... You came out, huh? You're dirty minded. What do you mean you came out? Isn't this the same story about Prophet Muhammad? He came out to do poo and then the angel Jibreel called him and says, Oh, Muhammad. And then Muhammad, he left up his panty, would not finish it to the end, and he started running. Do you want to show the reference? Don't talk about came out again. He's sensitive. I came out one night, it was the full moon night. Really? Look at the emotion, he cannot talk. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys, excuse me. The words, I, I want to talk, but look, he want to say it, it's not coming. It's so emotional. The prophet is so hot. What are you talking about? I mean, the guy, he's out of words, look. And... Brother, so give me give me some water, guys. If you see the bottle of water I'm drinking from, I, honestly, it's in the size of a barrel. I, I don't know where I get this one from. This is for the water. I can swim inside it. What the heck is this, anyway? What man? What happened? It's so emotional. I looked at the moon and. In the desert, understand the moon. I don't understand. Sorry. In the desert, I don't know. What? In the desert, what? What happened in the desert? The moon is different in the desert. It's a moony moon. You know? 
Don't go, don't go to China or Korea. Everybody there, their name is Moon. Mr. Moon, Moon number one, Moon number two. More. What do you mean go to the moon in the desert? There's moon everywhere. Okay, so the moon in the desert is different from the moon in the TikTok city? It's, it's an awesome sight. It is smooth. Ah, the moon in the desert is smooth. Now I know, like once I went to coffee shop, they said, sir, do you want smoothie? I said, what the heck is that? They said that we, we put the moon. They mixed it with the mixer. <laughs> the moon there is a smooth? There. Are you sure? Okay. It is radiant. It is clear. It is gentle compared to the scorching sun. Of which... So what, what are you talking about? Shouldn't Muhammad be more bright than the sun, you idiot? Shouldn't Muhammad... Be more bright than isn't it the Quran describe him as a Sirajan? Sirajan Mudiyan. The Quran described Muhammad as light for the world. What kind of light? Siraj. They're used to. So the moon was the epitome of beauty. So he says, I came out at the full moon night. And the guy, he, this is an experiment, you know? This man at that time, he was making a video in TikTok. He came one, one night. One night will change your life. He came at night and the moon was there. And what happened? I looked at the, at the moon and I saw it. Beautiful, handsome. So I said, let me go see if the moon is more handsome or my prophet is more handsome. This is the only Muslim in the world he decided to do this comparison. The rest of the Muslims did not notice. This guy, he said, you know what? I'm going to see. Like, but didn't he see Muhammad already a thousand million times before? Now he need to go and see. Like now at this moment, he decided to see what Muslims... You, you know, you know what you remind me of the story is? The story of Abraham in the Quran. The Quran says, should I show you the story now? Okay, let us, let us vote, let us vote. Who want to see the story in the Quran? Give me one if you like to see the story in the Quran. If you like to see the story in the Quran, give me one, please. As you know, I'm an Arab. We like democracy, you know. We vote. Always in the Middle East, we vote. Saddam Hussein is my cousin. So if you like me to show you the story in the Quran, because I want to show you how stupid the story is. But give me one if you like to see the story. Nobody wants to see it. Okay. No way I want to see what I can do. I wanted to show you the story, but you guys don't want to see it. And I, you hurt my feeling now. You know, we, we are up when, when you hurt our feeling. You know what we do? We take an airplane. We hit it in the building. What, what, what are you doing? Don't do that to me. Okay, 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 okay. As long as all of you, you want me to show you the reference from the Quran, I decided not to do that because I forgot to tell you we are Arab, we are stubborn. We do the opposite. We don't believe in democracy. Crazy people. Do you think really I care for your vote? If I care, that proves that I'm an internet Arab. Is that true, Zach and I? Chris and Prince, I agree with you. Prophet Muhammad never agree with that. What the heck, Zach and I? Just agree, just agree with me, man, so we can have a conversation. You agree with me all the time, at least for the sake of, so you can believe us if we discuss. You always agree with me. Chris and Prince, is that true? I would agree with you. Abdul, you always agree with me. This a prince. That you are a liar? I didn't agree with you. Okay, hold on. Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad was so smart. Agree. You stupid idiot. You just said to me, always you disagree with me. Okay. Prophet Muhammad was so handsome. This a prince. I agree. What the heck? Okay. Prophet Muhammad, when he speak, he have a very, very, very nice voice. Mr. Prince, I can agree more. What the heck? Just a second ago, you told me you don't agree with me. So do you agree with me all the time or you disagree with me all the time? Mr. Prince, that is the bend. What the heck? Mr. The bend, step aside. We want to continue the video. Go ahead. Let me see if that is more beautiful or the prophet is more beautiful. So I went and I saw him standing afar. So I looked at his face 
and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and he said Wallahi, what wait 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 wait, wait. I saw him standing afar so I looked at his face and I face and I looked at the moon face and I looked at the moon so I looked at his face and I looked at the moon so I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon so I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and I looked at his face and I looked at the moon and Abdul for the sake of the face or the shin of Allah I mean don't you think that the story is so stupid because if Muhammad is so good looking why he keep need to keep looking here looking here looking here isn't it obvious that Muhammad from the first look is better you just insulted your prophet if I am there, I will not even need to look just once. That's it. Prophet Muhammad, he won. But what you did now is so stupid. You just made it that the guy was thinking, which one? This one, this one, this one, this one. Shaka baka, shaka baka, baka, ku. What the heck? Shouldn't Prophet Muhammad, he win immediately? So the guy, he keep looking at the moon, looking at Muhammad, looking at why he's confused. Shouldn't he vote right away for Prophet Muhammad? You Muslims are insulting the... And by the way, the moon doesn't look good, you stupid Abdul. Who told you the moon looked good? Who told you? Have you ever looked at the moon carefully? I will tell you what happened to the moon. The moon when he was young, a teenage, Has a lot of pimples. So you are comparing the face of the moon to the face of your prophet. Are you mentally ill? What's wrong with you? I'm really disappointed. Let me show you how the moon looks like. Oh boy, this is how the face of your prophet looked like? Are you serious? This is your prophet's face. And the prophet he won, and the guy was not sure which one is more handsome? Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Look at the heck, look at this face. And he's looking at the ceiling of the building. He saw the moon there. Where is the intelligence of those people? They worship the man, that's it. They worship the boy, the pedophile. I mean, if you know how the moon looks like, you idiot, you will never say what you are talking about. But obviously, you do not know how the moon looks like. Do you? Do those Abdul have a brain? Same time, if Muhammad was a male, why in the world anyone want to speak about how good looking he is? You see, this is can be accepted if you are speaking about a beautiful woman. You love. But this is a man. What's wrong with you Muslims? And all of us, we knew that all those information written hundreds of years after Muhammad. And as we showed you, Muhammad uncle, according to you Muslim, looks so ugly. So how Muhammad looks so good? Do we have any Muslim here want to tell us why you are so obsessed with the look? Why the look is so important? Hmm. Man, I wish I am good looking. I have many qualifications to be a prophet. I have a thick beard. 
people they say I have a nice voice, but I am not good looking. But hold on. I have someone think I am the most handsome person in the world. That is my mom. I think I, I okay, now I'm prophet. That's it. I am ready to be a prophet. And uh, I don't think your prophet, his voice is better, do he? And I don't think your prophet is a smarter. I mean, the, your prophet is an idiot. The sun set in murky water. You want to see me? Who is here? Uh, who is here from Pakistan and from Indonesia? I'm invited for a conference. Seriously. They told me to join the conference. It's a missionary conference. There's like, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 people coming from around the world. They said, come and we want, they said, we want you only five minutes in the stage. You don't know what will happen if I go in the stage for five minutes and those Indonesian and uh, Pakistani Christians there, I you know, I will have like 5,000 selfies with, with them. So just five minutes, the guy like, you know, just five minutes. said, are you sure not three minutes, not one? You know, just five minutes in the stage, you know, if you don't want, like, you know, just five, you know. Yeah, just, just not, nothing, like, listen, supposedly that will make a difference, like, just five minutes. And I know what will happen, you know. So, uh, yeah, I, I, say, I said I apologize. I don't know if you are from Indonesia? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good, my friend, good, good. I, I don't mind to meet people, really, but I'm not uh, seeking publicity, as you know. Some people they love it and etc. But I'm, I don't care for for all those things. Uh, five minutes you will get famous in Indonesia. One minute, one twenty second. <laughs> yeah, but you know some people they like they like to be in the stage and you know for me I don't really care for that. I told them if there is a seminar, if you want me to do a seminar. I don't mind. I will be happy to join. Something serious, but not to just, uh, you know, just to bring them Christian friends. Uh, will you collect your 5 p.m. the video? Uh, no, you know, what happened, uh, the guy who promised me the 5 p.m. the video, he died. All right? So, uh, the BMW were in front of his house, Jibril came and collected them, you know? And now I made a case against the uh, Indonesian government to bring me the 5 BMW, but they said Jibril took them, and now the Prophet Muhammad is riding them. I said, this is not true. Prophet Muhammad, his favorite ride was Aisha. And now I have a case with the Indonesian government. They want to arrest me. Mm. True story. But this is Moon Muhammad, and he is from the what the uh, Indonesian Christian really wish you to debate more Indonesian mainly because Indonesian need to know the truth. I mean, what I can do, bring me, uh, contact the sheikhs, let them call me. What I can do, go, go and uh, knock at their door, bring me the Abdul, I will, uh, you know, I will be, uh, I will be happy. So as you see, this, this religion, if it's from God, why those, and, and they claim that Muhammad is just a servant, you know, but tons of hours, books written about the, even the Billy Baum of Muhammad. I mean, have you ever heard of somebody speak about the Billy Baum of somebody? The underarm of somebody? How white the shin of Prophet Muhammad? What will happen if Muhammad was black? We are, why we are talking about how white he is? How white his face, how white his arms, how white his shin, how white his underarm. And then they say to you, Islam is for everybody. But this is absolutely false. In fact, Muhammad, he described the anti-Islam as an Ethiopian black African man. The Quran describes that in the day of judgment, Allah will make all non-Muslim black and all Muslims extremely white. 
the Quran described that everybody in the heaven of Allah is white like pearl. Even the black stone was white, but the sin of man made it black. So sin make you black. The black stone was whiter than milk, Muhammad said. And then the sin of man made you or made it black. I wonder what will happen if you make Indonesian president leave Islam. You know, we don't know who will leave Islam or who is not. I mean, people watch my video. Do you know who is watching the video? We don't know. But I tell you, uh, we as a Christians, we are not doing a good job to share, you know, the truth with others. If I am a Christian prince, a Muslim, do you know how much of you I will have? Do you know? So Christian in general, they are just relaxed people. They don't really, you know, okay. So Christian friends, thank you, thank you, you know. But they don't share, they don't uh, do any work. Where is the young Christians who make short videos of uh, Muslim calling me? Very few. Very, very few. So we need more people who do work, not only people saying words. We need warriors, not talkers. Do we have any Muhammadan would like to tell us why all the descendants of Muhammad are blonde and white? Why not one of them is black? Is it true that if you say Prophet Muhammad is black, kill him? Is that true? And then we need to ask ourselves, Why even they want to say that? Any Muslim can tell me? Why even this is mentioned? Hmm? Any Muhammadan? Why anyone? Why we have even this story? Whoever say Muhammad is a black, kill him. Is it possible that he was black? Is it possible that he's not totally white, maybe? But as you see, all reference saying he was very white. So why? And what, what is exactly the problem if somebody says Prophet Muhammad was black? To the point, we kill him if he said that. Let me show you. Let me see if I can find the reference in English first. But I doubt we can. Maybe you can yourself search in English. But I will try to find it in English because this is in Musnad Ahmad. I think I don't think this website has this. No. Yeah, I cannot find it. So if we go here, this is in uh, uh, it says here the one who say anyone who say that Prophet Muhammad is a black, kill him. Let us use Google translation. And just to find the location, it should be above here. Two page now it says two nineteen, two seventeen. So it's going to be like a few lines above it. 
So now we switch to translate. All right. And maybe we can look for the word uh, black in English. All right, here we go. Whoever says that the Prophet, may Allah pray on him, not you know, this is a false translation, and grant and pray on him and salute him, say he was a black, he should be killed. You see, the translation is not too much, too much accurate. Anyone, he say, Prophet Muhammad is a black, kill him. And then the Muslims, when they go to speak to black people, they say to them, Oh, Islam is, you know, uh, Prophet Muhammad, he loves black people. Islam for everybody, brother. Prophet Muhammad, he said, there's no black, there's no white. Those are fabricated hadith. We have a very authentic hadith, which when Allah created the black people, he created them from the left shoulder of Adam. He hitched Adam's shoulder. And then... His seed came, his children came from the left shoulder like circle, black. And he said to them, you go to hell and I don't care. And he hit the right shoulder of Adam and the white people came like white ants. And he said to them, you go to heaven and I don't care. Wala ubali. When Muhammad and he go to a black person, he tried to fool him, speaking about what the white man did to you. But the fact is, every single black person was enslaved, was captured, sold, taken from his home by the Arab white Muslims in North Africa. Morocco, Libya, Algeria, Algeria Tunisia. And because people, they are stupid, nobody want to check. They don't ask themselves, okay, okay, how the white man doing his evil, bringing those poor slaves? Why? Who? The guys from where? Were they at that time occupying Africa? No. So how they get them? Nobody want to check. No one want to study. It was the until now the biggest market for slavery in the world is in Muslim countries. In fact, Muslims until now they did not sign the human right agreement against slavery because it's against Islam. So while the Muhammadan is spending their time. Speaking about how good looking Muhammad is, the white man Muhammad, even the Messiah, by the way, even the Messiah, Muhammad described him as a blonde man. How many times of you know you guys you heard a Muslim saying, Oh Christian Prince, you follow the white man, your master Jesus, the white man. Let me find you the hadith. Give me a minute. He was a red head, according to Muhammad. Do you see it? He saw, Muhammad, he claimed that he saw Jesus, the son of Mary, a medium man with white and red complexion and the crisp hair and then you see Abdul saying to you hey Christian brain or Christians people you know you worship God the white man your master this is your private description in fact 
Not a single place in the Bible says the word white about Jesus or black or anything. Because this is the last thing we care for. What if Jesus was born in Africa and he is an African? I will not follow Jesus. What if he was born in any Asian countries? I will not follow him. Do you to have do you have to be a white man to be sent by God? Obviously in Islam, yes. This is why they are describing how white Muhammad is. What your color have to do with your quality? There is bad people everywhere. There's good people everywhere. There's criminals, there are rapists in every race. And there's wonderful people in every race. It's your prophet who described Jesus as a red man, red head. Literally. And the funny is, Muhammad, he claimed that his God, Allah, looked like Jesus. Do you know that? His God, Allah, looked like Jesus. If you remember the hadith where it speak about the description of the Antichrist, you see in Islam, the Antichrist is a word as not exist. There is Al-Masih al-Dajjal. What did Masih al-Dajjal mean? The false messiah. How the false messiah look like? He looked like Allah. Literally. Is that true? Absolutely. I have the reference. This is how the false messiah look like. And Muhammad was worried that the Muslims will follow him and think that he is Allah. Do you see it? Let us open Skype and see if there is any Muhammadan besides Fakira from Senegal would like to call us. I want to debate you in a few hours. I am different time zone. If you are still in eight, eight, ten hours today, okay, let's see. This guy, he's going to debate me. Uh, sad, it says he is not online. We have Asad. Asad is a very smart person. I ask a cleric, should Islamic law be narrow-minded or board-minded? It says that it should be as Allah wants. I said, but everyone has their own interpretation of the Quran. You remember this uh, gentleman, Asad? He is the one. He, he was insulting me, by the way. I don't know now what he is saying to me. I think he is watching. I will show you what uh, what he is saying, and I will call him actually. Uh, so I went to I, I went and said, but everyone has their own interpretation of the Quran. He said that Allah has only one copy, the Quran. Well, I ask more a question as there is wisdom behind every command in Islam, and what is the wisdom behind women? A veil and there is no veil or barrier in heaven what is the wisdom behind it despite so much freedom how can there be no room for mischief and corruption the mav, mav molavi said which means the sheikh that since the soul will be separated from the body there will be no temptation left what the heck the guy you have a penis the prophet, he says, you will rip their, their vagina and he separate from his body. I say that according to the Quran, when the soul dies, who will be punished? He said, I don't know, tell me. I said, the soul inside the body and the soul 
circulate. Let us let us call him and see what's going with uh, with Assad. What we see what he's talking about. Look like he is struggling with this shake. But last time he called me, he was insulting me in the, in the chat. He is not answering. Okay, maybe he is not there. Let us see if we have another Muslim. You are not online? Hmm. We see different, different, different person. This person is not answering too. like the Muslims don't want to answer today they just text me okay I'm just trying to find if there's any Muhammad who would like to join us until now I didn't see anyone Okay, well, if you are a Mohammedan and you are proud to be a Muslim, uh, you know, I, 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 I want to be proud to be a Muslim, but I'm afraid to happen to me what happened to Abraham. You know, Abraham, this guy is weird in Islam. Sometimes they call him Abraham, sometimes they call him Ibrahim, because the Quran even could not get the, the name correctly. And then the Muslim, now they are fixing the copy of the Quran, and now they are calling him Ibrahim. Is it Ibrahim or Abraham? <laughs> in the Quran Abraham oh we have Asad hello hello how are you hey Asad how are you I'm good and you I'm fine last time you text me in chat when like you were saying to me you are coward you call me names correct really yeah you forgot it's in the chat um that time maybe you was not uh, picking my calls if you see yeah but sometime i'm i'm not even in skype you know i don't uh, go in skype all the time and you were calling me uh, you know and you got me busted supposedly and you send me text about destiny i mean if i if i if i now scroll down about what you send me you send me like a long new, newspaper so what do you want to say uh so go ahead I just sent you our references from Bible, and it's so clear about destiny. It seems like in Quran, and no, my friend. So you see, you cannot you read it. You cannot. No, you cannot explain. We we have the word destiny, but as you know, as a, if you hear me all the time, we Christians and Muslim we share not, we share nothing. As an example, you Muslim, you say Islam is against fornication, correct? Islam is what? Islam is against fornication, correct? Like, uh, we believe that uh, everything uh, is written before the creation of the universe. No, 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 no. just, just, just uh, focus with me. Do you accept, you as a Muslim, to say that Islam against fornication, forbid fornication, yes or no? Um, I think... Uh, Islam says if you will talk about destiny no no I'm not talking Islam about destiny forget, forget about destiny now fornication according to the Quran everything is linked uh, with destiny you know if you will I know I know but about... I, I want you to forget about just to give you an idea just to explain to you you Muslim you say fornication in the Quran is haram forbidden but if you just change the name fornication became marriage that's what you did as, uh, as a Muslim. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, the so, answer is so that same as for the same as for destiny, the word destiny in the Bible is exist, but it's not the same. So, if the Bible says that God He chose us before we chose Him, this is talking about the chosen people. God have a plan, but still, even the chosen one, the Bible says, the chosen one, 
they can they can be unchosen as an example didn't jesus he, he chose 12 disciples he did right and then there's one of them he betrayed him why 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 he betray him because it's a free will isn't it jesus says not everyone says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who does his will so you can say lord lord as much you want if we believe in the destiny the way you understand it then that's me there's no need even for me to say lord lord it's already i will go heaven or hell doesn't matter it's destiny no in christianity there is no such a thing okay so uh, isn't it hold on i'm not done isn't it the Messiah? Okay. He said, "From their fruit, you shall know them." He did, um, right? Okay. So, yes. if if we know the person from their fruits, that means there is no destiny. Because if the destiny is what we know the person with, then this is the fruit of God, not my fruit. It, it's destiny. So, from their fruits, you shall know them. Then it's about. Uh, destiny have different meaning in Christianity. Destiny is you writing your own destiny. Isn't it the Bible says that God told Adam, don't do this and don't do that, otherwise you will die? Yes. He chose to do that. It's not God. But in the Islam story, and you know the story, I mentioned it to you before, it was Allah who made Adam commit sin. So in Islam, destiny is everything. In Christianity, it's not. Um. Can you read these verses of Bible? Then you will I just understand. I just gave you the answer for all of them without even you can read them yourself. You can go on right now and check all the interpretation of the Christians. You will see none of them have to do with you being destined okay. to do uh, uh, certain things. No, that's not uh, true. Will you, will you answer my uh, like uh, small question? Okay. Uh, like in the Quran, everything uh, we, everything is uh, with so much detail about uh, uh, de destiny also about uh, um, us like our genetics or brain or hearts give me a, or, give me an example uh, give me an example and i will show you that it's not true okay so um, uh, in the quran uh, god says that how he created our souls like human human souls uh, First, uh, he said that first he... Um, uh, where he, where uh, in the Quran it says how he created the soul? Okay, let me talk, let me finish, uh, then you will I know, understand. I know, I know. I said we are talking because I, you know, for me, I focus on details. You just said, the Quran says Allah, he told us how he created the soul. Where in the Quran it says that? I want to know from you. Okay. Um, uh, first, he said that uh, we made uh, uh, his uh, structure with mud, Adam's structure. But you said and soul first. We... You said soul. First, you started with soul. You said Allah told us how he created the soul. So that's not true. There's nowhere he said how he created the soul. In fact, in the Quran, it says that your God, Allah, he borrows soul. We don't create soul. Is that correct? Uh, Christian Prince, let me complete, then you will understand. I understand, Please. my friend. I know what you are going to say you before even you say not it. not letting me speak. You then, just then interrupting fo me. Focus with me. So, focus. Focus with me. Do your God, Allah, create a soul or he borrow a soul? He um, creates souls. He creates souls. So, okay. Yeah. So, if we ask you now, when Allah, he breathed into Adam, he breathed from the soul of who? His his soul his soul this soul isn't it the most and they say this is jibreel like jibreel have a different soul no 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 ask any muslim he will say if you search right now do allah have a spirit they will say no allah is not a spirit and he has no spirit the spirit is jibreel so according to the quran the soul which allah he create with is borrowed from jibreel not from Allah, not Allah. So when Allah, he breathed into Adam, as we see in chapter 15, verse number 29, it says, So when I fashioned him and I breathed from my spirit, you ask any Muslim, who is the spirit? They say, this is Jibreel. This is not Allah. Allah have no spirit. 
Okay. So every human have a soul inside them and uh, also uh, these uh, like angels and uh, they also created from God's soul and uh, God no, no, hold on hold on your uh, angels soul. angels are created from God's soul yeah where you get this from because uh, it's uh, in Quran and uh, they are uh, like um, show me Um, I don't remember the uh, references. There is no but, such a uh, thing. There is no such a thing. Allah Himself is not a soul. So how how the angel created from Allah's soul? Your prophet said that angel created from light, not from soul. So God is light, truth. Listen, listen. Just to show you, even the angels are not even a soul. The Quran is a book of contradiction. In one hand, the Muslim they say to us that the Holy Spirit is Jibreel. They say that, but but Jibreel is not holy according to the Quran because he and the rest of the angels they disobey. They question Allah about uh, uh, creating Adam. They question God and they said to him, "Are you going to create someone who do mischievement?" And then Allah ordered them to bow down to Adam. So if Jibreel is holy and the angels are holy, how in the world do you command the one who they are holy? To, do, to bow down to the human being. Same time, when you say that Allah, he ordered them to bow down to Adam, that means Adam is higher than angels. He's higher. Who, who bow to who? Same time, in the top of that, the Muslim, they claim that, uh, you know, uh, in Islam, we, we bow only uh, to Allah. To bow down to anyone else is a shirk. But Allah is the first one who commit shirk. He made all the angels bow down to a man who commits sin. Okay, I answer you already about that. I sent you that text. Let me read it, then you will understand. Because you're not letting me speak at all. Okay, you're give me, not, give uh, me, uh, uh, give me the verse. I keep asking you, give me the verse. You said uh, you, you, you never give me any verse. Give me the verse. I will give you verse uh, two, uh, but but uh, you have to listen that first. Okay. Please. I don't want to. I don't want to sleep. You know. I said I want. I want you to go to the point. You are giving me a speech, you know. Each time I ask you to give me something to prove what you just said, you see, if you notice, you say things, I stop you. I say, okay, give me a word. It says Allah has a spirit. Where Allah is a spirit, you give me nothing. See, so you throw I, things. This is what you do. I did not memorize the Quran. I don't, I so don't I care. Don't I don't care. I don't care. But I cannot, I cannot let you throw things in on the air without me saying this is not a true or it's true. Because people are listening. So if you say something but, uh, is not a true and I let you go away with it, people will think I agree. But uh, I will uh, give you reference to, but uh, before uh, that, you have to listen this. Uh, okay, I will, I will give you reference to. Give me the conclusion. So, so you have to. Uh, First, you have to uh, listen uh, the definition of soul. Soul is actually a knowledge, a data, a thinking, like a unseen energy. Like uh, for soul example, is in, soul is unseen energy. Yeah. Mm, who said that? Soul is a unseen energy because uh, who said who have, said who said that? According to which Everybody religion? Knows that. Everybody know that. Don't tell me everybody. Who's everybody? Michael Jackson? Who's everybody? When uh, you say, we're talking about religion now. You know? We're talking about religion. So don't tell me everybody. Uh, you are, are you talking about your own religion or making things up? Are you became a, a, a Buddhist now or a Hindu or something? Are you a hippie? There is, a, um, there is a verse in uh, Surah Kamar, uh, okay. it says that uh, soul is a unseen energy, so let me... Okay, okay. Uh, uh, give me the verse, it says soul is unseen energy, I want to read it. Okay, wait a second, I give you the verse number, okay. wait a second. Oh. I'm... I'm finding favorite.
Okay. So uh, in Surah Kamar, uh, verse number 50. Okay, Al Kamar, verse number 50. All right. 50. All right, read it for us. Al Kamar, verse number 50. <laughs> The um, Bil Basari. What is Bil -basari. that? This is uh, this. You are reading Arabic for me, uh, Asad. Um, so it's saying that that verse is saying that uh, oh. that uh, soul is uh, nothing but uh, it's my um, how to say. Uh, order or word which is uh, uh, like uh, most uh, which is powerful like uh, light i don't know you, you know you you muslims are really uh, you give me uh, uh, you know you give me answers and you know in your in your text to me in the in skype you say to the sheikh you were talking to the sheikh you told him that how come every Muslim have his different interpretation for the Quran? But you do the same. We are here speaking about energy, and we are here is speaking about any soul. What soul? Because, because uh, God says that uh, when the when Jews ask uh -huh. uh, Muhammad, what is soul? So a God answered in Quran, a soul is a what soul? Where is okay? What is where is the where we are, where we are talking about the soul here? Where, where there is no soul. The verse you are giving me have nothing to do with soul. This is talking about if he commands something, anything happen is going to happen in the click of an eye. But which is stupid? Why? Because when Allah in the Quran says. If in the, the similarity between Jesus and Adam is the same as, you know, uh, he said to, to the both, like, be and was. But all of us, we knew that when Allah, he wanted to create Adam, Adam, he was so worried because Allah is so slow. And he said to him, finish me before the sun set. Is that correct? Isn't it the Quran yeah. says that Allah took him six days to create the earth and the heaven? So what the blink of the eye mean? So I told you that in Quran, uh, God says that uh, soul is over command. So here, okay. Amrana means no, no. You see, the, no, no. Amrana hold on, hold on, hold on. See, you just said the Quran says the soul is from the command of Allah. So it's not the soul of Allah. It is a, a soul is something he command, and that is what they ask him about the spirit. Muhammad, he don't know to answer. He said, "Tell us about the ruh." He says. It took him a long time to answer. He said to them, Allah told me. He said, Allah only knows. It's from the command of Allah, which is very uh, stupid answer. Isn't it everything from the command uh, of God anyway? When Allah, uh, well, when Allah did answer about uh, what is soul, he said, it's over command. Soul is over no, command. No, this is not how they, what this have to do. I'm asking you, what is the soul? You tell me it's from my, the command of God. That's stupid. I ask you, I ask you, what is the angel? You said to me, it's command from God. I asked you what is the son you said to me it's from the command of God. I'm asking you what is the in soul? Bible, in Bible uh, it's mentioned that uh, everything made with word of God. Yeah, know? But but here so no word. hold on you see you see okay. Hold on. But here I they ask Muhammad what is the spirit? He could not answer and he says it's by the command of God which means how it function but this is not the question. They are asking you what is the spirit? Muhammad is an idiot. They are not asking you who command the spirit. He is asking you what is the spirit. You know, uh, Quran is also a spirit of God. No, that's false. The Quran, according to your prophet, is the word. And this word is going to be coming as a man in the day of judgment. It's not a spirit. Isn't it your prophet, he says, did the Quran come as a pale man in the day of judgment and he witnessed to the one who read it? It's a man. So your religion is a very confusing religion. Your God is not a soul. Your God could not answer what is a soul. Your God could not answer anything. 
you know, just to make it simple for you, Asad, you mentioned to me that your Quran explained to you details, correct? Yeah. Okay. Did you go to school? Yeah. All right. Do you know how hail is made? Hail, like the ice in the sky? Do you know how it's made? Ice in the sky. Yeah. Like, not sure. Okay, I forget about the ice. I will ask you about something else. Did the school teach you how the sperm go and fertilize the egg? I um, watched uh, your videos about it already. Okay. So, is it true that the Quran says that the sperm became a dead blood? So, I don't have uh, a research about it. Uh, so, do you believe that if you leave your sperm on the table, second day you come, you will find the blood? Is that what, that what happened? Who in the world will believe that a semen of a man will become a blood? This is God talking, how the baby is created. It cannot be from God. Either you speak as God speak, okay. and that is what uh, here's, so here's the verse where God saying uh, that Quran is uh, our soul. Um, chapter 42, verse 52. Chapter what? For, uh, 42? Chapter 42, okay. verse 52. Okay, what about it? I'll read it. Uh, is saying that uh, uh, we uh, sent you our soul uh, and uh, you uh, actually this verse is very stupid you know you just said to me Allah have a spirit but as you see Allah is commanding the spirit same time Awhayna ilayka ruhan. Do you know what awhayna mean? Uh, like soul. No, awhayna mean inspire. The translation falsely saying, we inspire you spiritually. That's false. Because Muhammad he received, it says, awhayna ilayka ruhan min amrina, which means we sent to you a spirit from our command not spiritually isn't it jibreel who come to muhammad squeeze him three times it's so noisy so yeah i will hang up on you until this idiot finish his adhan and i call you back guys the stupid muhammad he don't even know arabic it says here we inspired but Muhammad never received inspiration. Muhammad received delivery from a physical person. He appeared in front of him as a man. That is not inspire. How Muhammad he knew, he claimed to be speaking good Arabic. How the, how the Muslim they claim that this is made by God? If a person he come to my door, Not only he said to me, read, he squeezed me physically, harshly, to the point I can't breathe no more. How in the world that can be used to describe what happened as an inspire? inspire? Do even Muhammad knew what inspire mean? So every single verse, you go in the Quran, you will find how stupid, how silly it is. Inspire is not a hand delivery. Inspire is that God in within you deliver something to you, inspire you. Not somebody coming to your door, knocking at your door, or coming to your house and squeezing you and says to you, read, and you say to him, I cannot. This is not inspire. So the story, the structure of the story is very stupid. Did the Sheikh finish singing? Hello. Did the Sheikh finish singing? Yes. Okay. Do you know what happened when the Sheikh sing? You say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar? No. You do not know? No. 
You don't? Okay, I will show you. According to your smart prophet, Shaitan, he fart. So I was worried that Shaitan will start farting in my room and I don't want to smell the smell of fart. This is what your prophet says. Here we go. Because supposedly I'm a Christian and obviously Muhammad he says everybody have a Shaitan. So uh, uh, it says, Wala hudurat. So each time Muslim he say Allahu Akbar, Shaitan he start farting and that explain a global warming. And this is telling us, who is your prophet? I mean, do you think really a prophet of God will say such a stupid thing? Be honest, I said. Do you think really someone who have a little brain will say that Shaitan, brother, sisters, when we say Allahu Akbar and we start praying, he start farting. Why? Because you don't want to hear it. Do you, do, it could be fake hadith. No, this is this is fake. Everything is fake in Islam. Muhammad is fake. He's a fake prophet. This is Al-Bukhari. This is Sahih Muslim. Any anything you Muslim, you see it's embarrassing. You say it's fake. So, can, uh, can you tell me in the definition uh, in um, Christianity about uh, soul? What teaching of Christianity about soul? Yeah. What's the definition of soul in uh, your well? Uh, like in Bible, soul is very very easy to understand. It is life. God, when He give you soul, He give you life. That's life. That's it. It's not an energy. It is life. Life is not an energy. It's not electricity. You see, electricity is energy. It is. Your body actually, your body have electricity. Even we are dead. Even rocks have electricity. So soul, when God He gave soul, He gave life. Soul is life. And life is from God. So it's not, it's not energy. It's not sugar. We eat and then we, our so stomach, con, you know, con, 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 convert. Life is not energy. Life, no, is not energy. You know, life is, 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 a, is the power of the miracle of God. Which nobody can explain. I don't mean energy. Listen, you listen. Know, okay. So, okay. So, if it's energy, hold on. If it's an energy, so then we should be able to generate as much, as much soul as we want. We have generators. We have nuclear yeah. energy. Yeah. So, this yeah. energy, this is not, ener this is not energy. This is, the, this is a, this is a spirit. This is a spirit which is unique, created by God, which is life. Life is given to you when God, He gave you life, not energy. Because you still, even when you are dead, still you have energy. Who said you don't? We can connect, we can connect your body to a scale of electricity and you will see there's negative and there's positive and there's energy in your, your, blood, in your, in your, in your body. There is. Okay. Do you believe in miracles? Uh, like what? The miracle of Muhammad? No, no. It's just a common question. Do you believe in so, miracles? Sure, believe in miracles. Because if you, if you believe in Jesus, you have to believe in miracle. Because Jesus himself, God himself is a miracle. Tell me the definition of miracle. God. The definition of miracle is hmm? God. Is God. <laughs> what is? What? I did not understand your definition. The definition of miracle is God. God is a miracle. Who, all miracles is what? Is God. God a God act, God action, God doing, God saying, God being. This is a miracle. So the definition of miracle, there's no other definition except he is God. So the Messiah himself, the Messiah himself, is just, hold on, the Messiah himself is, a, is the miracle. Not only he do miracle, he himself is a miracle because nobody can explain what miracle is when when we say oh this is a miracle which means i cannot explain how it happened you know like the person he fell from the 10th floor still is alive it must be a miracle because it's not normal so usually human being in the language they use the word miracle for something nobody can explain and it's beyond explanation but however in the meaning of spirituality miracle is not just something nobody can understand how it happened because there's millions of things around us we do not know how they happen we don't but Miracle is the act of God and God Himself, not just something we cannot explain because billions of things around us we can't explain. We do not know about it yet. So it's not being ignorant is a miracle. 
it is God who is miracle. That is a miracle. There's not nothing else is a miracle beside God. Only God is a miracle. And he do when he do act, that is the act of God. So every act of God is God, for he is a miracle himself. Okay. You uh like creating it so complicated but uh, let me tell you what is miracle mean what uh, the definition definition of tell miracle me, tell me i want to go ahead miracle. like uh, how we have a physical power so physical power is that okay I, I, will, I, will, I will i will go with you your prophet he received a dish of shish kebab he ate it he got the power of 40 men is that a miracle you did not let me complete. No, we are letting you complete. You see, because I don't want to hear blah 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 from yeah. from the top of the roof. I'm talking about religion. I'm not talking about you. I'm not talking about me. Your prophet, he he said he was the most weak person in intercourse. He invoked his God, and now your God, Allah, decided to make miracle. How he make it? He went to the kitchen. He brought shish kebab. He mixed it with some spice coming from India. God knows where from, you know, from which kitchen. And he mixed it together and he said some words and then he sent it with Jibreel. Muhammad, he received it. He ate the shish kebab and then he went to his wives and he started doing boom, boom, non-stop. And his wives, they said that Prophet Muhammad, after he ate the shish kebab, and Muhammad said that too, he got the power of 40 men. Is that a miracle or this is a recipe of food? I am telling you the difference between physical power and spiritual power. No, this is your religion. So this is your religion. Your religion says that Muhammad, he received a miracle from his God for his penis, but your God could not fix Muhammad's penis without sending shish kebab. When Jesus, he made the blind see, did he give him a food, says eat it three times a day and after one week you will be fine? He did not. This is not a miracle. If I give somebody Viagra, and he ate it, and then his penis is like, boing, 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 you know? That's not a miracle. So, when your God, if he is God, he did not need to send a dish of shish kebab to his prophet, and then he eat it, and then he will become a powerful insect. I will make it even simpler for you. Have you ever heard of somebody, he have a surgery to install faith in his chest? Who have a surgery and what? To install faith in his chest, in his heart. Uh, no. Okay. So if I say to you now, this is a true story, by the way, it happened to me, but long time ago. I cannot show you the pictures because the stitches are gone. I, an angel came to me. He opened my chest from here to here, which means to my testicle, excuse me. And then he brought wisdom and faith and he put it in my heart and my chest and my testicles. You believe me or not? Um, I never heard. No, I'm asking you, do you believe me or not? Don't hurt my feeling, please. Like, uh, God can do anything. But do God need a surgery to put uh, faith in my chest? Or he say, go and be wise? <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, you are right. Okay, right. But, th but this is what happened to your prophet. This is exactly what happened to your prophet. Your prophet, he claimed that Allah sent two angels okay. and they, so, they, they cut, the, hold on, they cut his chest and, uh, you know, and, and, they put a di and they brought with them a dish of faith and a dish of wisdom. And then they stuff his nerves and his vein uh, uh, by the faith and wisdom and then the prophet became wise. Have you ever heard of such a thing? What, if, if, and you said you agreed. You said, God do not need to do that. This is a funny story. So what kind of God, in order to make Muhammad wise, he had to send two angels and they cut open his belly and then they wash it with the water of Zamzam. And after that, they took him to heaven after they put this stuff, his veins, with, uh, with, with the faith and wisdom. Have you ever heard of faith coming in dishes? Faith, faith. Is faith is something physical, I said? <laughs> Why you not? Don't yeah. laugh, please. Listen, we cannot laugh. You know, uh, you, you are a Muslim. Don't laugh at the Prophet. May, may, may Allah forgive you, brother. May Allah forgive you. Okay. I know a person, by the way, he laughed at the Prophet 
Allah punished him and made him look like me. I'm telling you, this is a true story. He woke up in the morning, he said, oh, I look like Christian Prince. He went crazy. He, he killed himself later, you know. So don't laugh. This is a story written, so, proved, and it is authentic. People, so uh, you're, a, you're a prophet. You're a prophet. Huh? Everybody, everybody have a, like Satan inside it, uh, their bodies. What Satan? Uh, if I forget, if I focus with me now, if you're God, you are telling me about miracles. If your God is God, do you think he need to, to, to send two doctors to open the chest of Muhammad and do plastic surgery? Send the guy to Korea. In Korea, they will do plastic surgery for you. They will move your nose. They will put it in your butt. They move your mouth. They put it in your head. They move your eyes. They put it in your ass. And that's it. So this is God. God, he is sending. Like, and why? Why? Muhammad was so stupid at the point he needed plastic surgery to fix him. How stupid Muhammad was to the point we send two angels to fix the guy. This is maintenance. And this is God, who in Muslim, they say, if you want to do something, he say, be is going to be. Okay, say, say, be wise. Create the man, Muhammad wise. You know, isn't you Muslim say that you believe in destiny? So is it destiny for Muhammad to be stupid? Yes, it is. And then it's destiny that Allah will fix the stupid Muhammad, which is was his creation. Yes, it is. So Allah made Muhammad stupid. And then Allah he said to himself, what I did, what I did, what I do. Oh, man, this guy is so stupid. Let me fix it. Hey, Jibreel, come here. Take with you your scissor. Take the other guy to help you. Take with you this dish. This one here, the one in gold is faith. The one in gold is wisdom. Jibreel said to what? God? What the heck? Both of them are gold. How I will know which one is faithful with them? So Allah said, okay, now we have two stupid. We have one, his name is Muhammad, and now the angel one is Jibreel. So he said, okay, one is gold, the first one, the big one. This is wisdom because Muhammad is so stupid. Have you ever heard of a story like this? And then they come and they cut the chest of Muhammad and they took all the stuff inside. What, what, what your prophet have inside him? Is that like a truck? And then they clean all the stuff inside. The, it's a, this is Al-Bukhari, my friend. This is Al-Bukhari. It, huh? it was a satin. They clean as a, like satin inside the heart. But I, but I a heart. Okay, so are you saying to me that your God, who is God, you need to clean Muhammad from certain things inside? How come Allah did not take Isa and after surgery? How come he did not do that to Moses? I mean, what's wrong with you Muslims? So now Allah, you, you, we spend one hour talking about how Muhammad eyelashes look like. And now it turned to be that Muhammad inside him is full of shit. And now we need to clean him. We cannot take him to heaven like this. And not only that, we have to install wisdom and faith. Why the guy, he is not faithful? Why is he so stupid? So the whole story is so stupid, so dummy. You have to be mentally ill, so slow to believe in it. Okay, uh, CP, we are talking on different uh, topic. Why okay, you okay, Asad, topic? Asad, I cannot, I cannot wait for you because I have a delivery. Hold on, the guy is coming. Hello? Yeah? Okay, uh, just hold on. The wisdom dish, I just ordered one wisdom dish, one for you and one for me. Because obviously, you know, I want to be equal to you in intelligence. So we would eat like, I don't know, like how, who is so smart? So we will keep eating me and you from the same dish. Until both of us, we have the same. And have you ever heard of a, of a God? He sent faith and wisdom in dishes, Asad. I mean, come on, man. Are we Why talking about... Topic? I'm not changing topic. We're talking about miracles. You mentioned... Sorry, the, it's, you who, it's you who mentioned the miracle. And then the second I, I, I got the Abdul Basu with the miracle, they say, don't talk about it. You're changing topic. It's you who mentioned it. You're not uh, letting me speak uh, about uh, I cannot let, I cannot let you speak. I can let you sing. What are you talking about? We are talking for the last hour, and now you're asking me not to uh, let you speak? I'm asking you a serious question. Do you believe that there is a prophet of God? He is seriously accepted to be a prophet. He will say such a dumb story. And now, listen carefully. You yourself, you love. Did you love at it? Be honest. Because I believe in a Quran only. Um, no, no, no! Don't tell me I agree Quran only. Here we go. Every Muslim. The second we show him how stupid he's a prophet, they say. Now suddenly he's Quran only. Last time you called me, you weren't a Quran only. 
Now you're grown only? What happened? Okay, listen, listen, so, listen. And this is Muhammad saying this story after he becomes smart, which means he's so stupid to the point he said this story because it's obviously the, the surgery did nothing. If I am became smart, I will never mention this story because nobody will believe in such a garbage. It doesn't make sense. And it's an insulting because I am going to tell you, hey, listen, my name is Muhammad. And I asked you be so stupid. And then Allah sent me a guy to fix me. And they brought with them the dish of gold and dish of silver. And one full of faith and one full of wisdom. And then they stuff it in my nerves and my vein. And now I'm so smart. What the, that, this, what, what? You are so stupid to say it. Saying this, this is the story as he said after the surgery. So how stupid Muhammad was before the surgery? Mm. I don't want to talk about that topic. I... All right, all right. So... Next time, next time. I, I need to oh. eat the dish you now for now. We have a Muslim. It's called Sunnah al Jamaa. He is so excited to call me. I will call you back, Asad. Just wait one by one. Answer, Abdul. Answer. He's not answering. Hello? Akira. What's up? Yeah, just shut up. Akira. His mother, she have to F four men in four different occasions, and then she will be considered fornicator. I wonder which one you were the fruit of the first effort, or the second effort, or the third offer, or the fr fr the fourth effort, and then they give you your name to your father, potato. Let us see. Four effort, four effort, brother. Hello? Ah, fuck you, right again. Hello? Hello? Are you going to speak or you want to get a dish of wisdom? Okay, Ooh. take a hike. Do you recommendation error in the Quran? I'm a friend, I mean, a person asked me, do you recommendation of Quran? The whole Quran is an error. What, uh, the whole Quran error, from the first page to the last page. Just watch my videos. Recommendation. Uh, somebody's asking me, can you please let Sam Shamoon to he want to talk to him. My friend, do you think I talk to Sam Shamoon? I talk to nobody. But the only person I talk to is um, uh, the mirror. Since I be, uh, start reading the stories of Muhammad, I became a crazy brother. I mean, the prophet of Allah is the best of mankind, yet he needs the surgery to put a bish of the faith and the show of wisdom. That is not fair. Okay. Why Allah don't send all of us the show of faith and wisdom? So look now, Muhammad is the best man as a looking, he's a white man. His eyebrows is not even connected. Oh man, what that amazing. His eyelashes, brother, they are like the wings of an, in, in a bird. If, if, even I heard that Prophet Muhammad never used anything to do barbecue. He just to blink his eyes. In the top of that, Allah, he made surgery for his chest. To do what? He clean it. Man, you should see what is inside my chest. Unbelievable. Tomato, potato. I, I, I swallow a, a screwdriver by mistake. You know? A magnet. A hammer. I mean, why? Because simply they were in the shelf and I was trying to grab them and my mouth is open because I was listening to the Quran, which is amazing, you know? I mean, especially when the Quran says the sperm coming from the, between the backbone and the ribs. And the hammer go down all the way between my ribs. And then I was there. So is it fair that God, Allah, he make a surgery for Muhammad to take off all the bad things from his chest and I, the hammer there is, just help me. 
Is it fair that there's a billions of a human being in the world, they are stupid, dummy donkeys, and Allah decide to send only, only dish of faith and wisdom to Muhammad. Why? The rest of the world don't need it. Is that fair? How we can understand the smart Muhammad if we aren't smart like him? So if Allah is God, should send dish of faith and wisdom to everybody. You eat the dish of faith, then you will become faithful. Look here, it says, and then they cleansed his side, his body, and then a golden tray brought, and then Jibreel stuffed his chest and a throat blood vessels with it. That's so deep. A golden tray, like Allah don't even use aluminum. Golden tray. Even God, you like gold. Not only women. For sure, because he don't want, you know, like uh, if he uses steel, the faith might be infected, like the rust, etc. So a gold, gold, brother. Maybe it's science, science. A golden tray containing gold. Look how many containers inside container. You open the first container, there's a second container. You open the second container, there's a third container. You open the third container, there's a fourth container, and the container of them to find what? Because inside them there is a belief in wisdom. Now we understand why you have to put them inside many containers. Like you know those guys when they take the kidney of somebody, you know? Why do they call it kidney? Like from the word like, are you kidding me? They learn from this story. Otherwise, the word kidney was not exist, actually. They, le they learned from Muhammad, the one who was making the English language. He saw this story. He says, kidney me. Kidney, you know, like, okay. So, and then because it's talking about taking his abodement, so they said, okay, this is the kidney. They learned from the Muhammad. All science, all knowledge, all everything from Allah and his prophet. Allah knows best and his prophet knows best. And now we understand where Muhammad get his knowledge from. The surgery. Surgeon. Otherwise, Muhammad is really dummy. But after the surgery, brother, see, listen, Muhammad after the surgery is not the same as Muhammad before the surgery. Muhammad before the surgery was really mentally ill. After the surgery, he's so smart, genius. Hey, Muhammad, the Christian believed in Jesus and, uh, and uh, God the Father and God the Son. Uh, Oh, can you tell me what the Trinity is? Okay, I will tell you. Trinity, the Christian believed that uh, Allah, he married Mary, and they have a baby. His name is Jesus. Abdul, what's wrong with you? The Christian don't believe in that. Where do you get this from? The Christian believed that God, he married a wife. Her name is Mary, and they have a baby. His name is Son, Jesus. It's what happened to you when you when your best man is a fool. Do I need to prove that Muhammad is a fool? It's in the front of you. Arabic has many dialect. My Arabic has different than Christian friends dialect. And what about your God? Is it true that your God Allah He sent the Quran in seven dialect? So if the, your prophet, he said that my people, they cannot handle it. For what? For a village. Village have seven dialect. It's a village. Shouldn't he send at least the Quran in seven languages? Pakistani, Urdu, Indonesian, Bahasa. So Allah decided to send with the Quran in seven dialect in Arabic because still after writing the Quran in seven Arabic dialects to the Arab cannot understand it. So how Abdul from Indonesia or Pakistan can understand? What's wrong with you Muslims? Aha, Barang, Badari, Talam. Ah, this guy is Indonesian. He claimed that he knew Arabic. Your prophet himself did not know Arabic. The dish of wisdom. You know what? I went to the doctor to fix my tooth. I don't, I hate. He told me you have uh, wisdom. I said, like, what the heck? This guy, he knew I'm a Christian prince. He said, what you said? 
He said, you have a wisdom, you know. What do you mean? He said, your tooth. Oh, okay, you know. I was saying like, what? How he got me busted? You know, I was looking like, like what the potato? He just looked at my, I did not even talk. He looked at my mouth and then he said, you have wisdom. What? How he knew? From my teeth? I mean, this is how technology went so far. They look at your teeth and now they discover that you have wisdom. That was dumb. How in the world Muhammad became a prophet? You tell me. If this man is a prophet, what is a stupidity is? We have Arabic speaker in Indonesia. Is that the guy who called me and he said to me, Christian Prince, tell me the answer, Christian Prince, or maybe the Arabic, they have Arabic speakers, or the one who said, Christian Prince, I have five questions for you. If you can answer them, I will give you 5 p.m. W. Like, what the heck? Tell me in the Bible. Like, this is Akarnaik now. Where Jesus Christ, he is said he is a Christian. Like, what the heck? I mean, all of you, you need a plastic surgery and dish of wisdom and faith. Show me where Jesus Christ, he said he is a Christian. And this is your best shake in the, in the, in the, in Indonesia decide to get me busted. Show me where Jesus Christ said, I'm a Christian. I'm so glad he didn't say, show me where Jesus says, I'm Hindu. Look, how you can prove to him now that Jesus Christ said, I'm a Christian? How? Christian Prince, he never got the 5 BMW until now he could not answer. He Muslims. So you want Muhammad to say he is Muhammadan? Really? Do you want Buddha to say he is a Buddhist? Uh -huh. Do you want Allah to say he is Allahist? That's deep. Do you want Jibreel to say he is Jibrilist? That is really. Do you want Tamara in the chat to say she is Tamarit? That is something. Hey Tamara, from now on, you don't say you are Tamara. You are Tamaratin. Like aspirin. Morphine. I mean, where this intelligence is coming from? Yusuf. Your name is Yusufine. Brother, you are following yourself. That's so amazing. Smart, smart people. I mean, genius. Actually, even the genie is coming from Islam. Genie, genie. Genie, yes. You know, what you can do about it? Nothing. Oh, Lord have mercy. Guys, did we have a good time? Uh, I don't want to ask you to leave a comment in the, because comment will make more people come and watch the video. So stay cheap. Don't even make it comment. Just come here to love. So don't give us a like because you don't like it, obviously. All right? All of you don't like what I do. Uh, but anyway, for me, I'm here to help the Muslims and to help the Christians to see how stupid Islam is. There's people are coming here to love. And yes, Islam is very lovable. But Islam is very dangerous. Islam can destroy your society, your community, your family. Don't think it's a joke. And those people are very well trained to deceive. Even though Islam is so stupid, but sadly, the majority of mankind is more stupid than Islam is. And as I say to you, if a foolish man like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? If there is a person in the world says to you, if you believe in my God, my God will make your penis in this. And you believe him how stupid you are if you are a person who believes that there's God because you believe in him he will sharp your penis and women are waiting for you to if them one after one non-stop dahman dahman which means hit so hard how dumb you are hey, listen I decide to become a prophet I will give you more not 72 not 72 females. I will give you 72 Zachary. Good and Prince. First of all, that is 
Uh, the brick is, what, 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 what replica and what is this? Hold on, I'm just joking with them. I know, I know, you like the idea to go to heaven. In the heavens, I can like, do you know that they can be F2 because the Quran says whatever you wish, which means you can F men. Do you know that in the heaven of Muhammad, a Muslim man will F men? Muhammad, he said, in the heaven, There's a bazaar. Al-Jannah the Souq. Al-Jannah the Souq. لا فيها بيع ولا شراء. No buying, no selling in it. Except images of men. And if a man wish an image he enter it to if it but the remember the image is what of men and women this is the promise of muhammad you are going to enter the heaven of a homosexual and imagine even that is not for free he said there's no buying and said in it except which means there is buying and selling even that is not for free. They lie to you, they say to you, you will have a free, everything for free. It turned to be no. Absolutely not. Go and read what Jesus said. And you must be a certified donkey to think that Muhammad is a holy man or a man of God. And to think that the Messiah is not the one who can save you. In the paradise, there is a market which nothing bought or sold except images of men and women. And if a man liked the image, he entered it to effort, become his. That is Muhammad's promise to the mentally ill person. The person who believe in this, he don't worship God. They worship penis and vagina. Is a sexual pervert. God who gave us all kind of joy. Don't you think in heaven he can give us way more joy than sex? Don't you think that God is capable to make me happy without even any of these things? And where is the joy here? What about the joy of love? Is it going to be beautiful, at least, to bring us back to where we used to be? God, he created Adam and Eve. Not Adam and the billion Eve. That is not God. This is the promise of the devil. He tempts you by your private part. He tempts you, the Quran describes, a brick of gold, a brick of silver. The, the floor is made of from zafaran and rubies. All of this to tempt you so you can become a pervert to worship sex and money and so called Allah, Akal al Devil Muhammad. I leave you with peace. And the Lord, He says, Peace those, peace for those who love peace and no peace for the wicked man, the Lord said. If you are a wicked man, you will never see peace even when you die, or you are going to go to hell. God is good, so is Jesus. I mean to that. I'll see you soon again. This is your brother Christian Prince, who has serving you humbly for today, and I hope to see you tomorrow soon.